Okay, so for today, this is indicator 24.2, and we are continuing working with rational exponents, and today we're going to do some operations with them, and these should not be new to you. So, what did I do with my, get it out, oh, it's charged. So we have done these operations before. The only difference that is going to be today is that our um, exponents are going to be fractions instead of whole numbers that we worked with the last time we did this. So a couple of properties, um, and these are um, exponent properties that we're going to talk about. All right, when we were multiplying like bases back several indicators ago, if you had x to the, and I'll just use, I won't use numbers here. So if you had x to the m times x to the n, okay, these are just, these aren't actual problems. These are just exam, uh, properties. When we had something like this, when you multiplied like bases, your base, your base, stayed your base, and what did you do with those exponents? You added them. So you just would have m plus n. Okay? When we had x to the m over x to the n, your base, your base, stayed your base, what did we do with those exponents? Subtracted them. So we had m minus n. And then lastly, we had x to the m raised to the n. We called this a power to a power. What did we do with the two exponents? Somebody, anybody? Multiply. Multiplied them. m times n. Okay, that all should be review. We did that before. Okay? And the... Last thing that you needed to remember when we dealt with properties of exponents is if you had x to the negative m, how did you deal with that negative exponent? Flipped it. Go ahead. Flipped it to the bottom, right? So really, we know that every value is really over 1. And so when you flip it, the 1 goes on top, and the whole x to the m drops to the bottom and you drop the negative. So those are the four things that should be review that we're going to use in today's. Now we're going to go back way further back in like third grade review, all right? And we are going to add fractions. We're going to review this just in case, okay? If you have two-thirds plus four-thirds, if the denominators are the same, you keep the same denominator and you just add across the top. 2 plus 4 is 6, and then of course that would reduce to 2. Okay? If the denominators are not the same, so if we have 1 third plus, uh, we'll do 3 twelfths. Okay, the denominators are not the same, so you need to force them to be the same. So we look at 3 and 12, and we think, can we make the 3 a 12? That's pretty easy. We can multiply the 3 by 4, and if we do it to the bottom, we have to also do it to the top of that fraction so that we don't change its value. So we would rewrite 1 third as 4 twelfths. And if you look at 4 twelfths and you think, if I reduce that, what would it be? it would reduce to one-third. So I haven't changed the value, but now I can add it to three-twelfths because the denominator's the same, and I get seven-twelfths, okay? And then the last thing we're gonna review, again, third or fourth grade, but I still wanna go over it just once, is if we multiply fractions. Little bit easier, because you don't have to worry about a common denominator. If we have two-thirds times four over three, you just simply multiply across the top. Two times four is eight. 
and you multiply across the bottom, three times three is nine. Always reduce fractions if you can, like we did in that first example, okay? All right, that was our little bit of review that we needed. <clears throat> So now we're going to move on to some examples of what you're going to see today. So first we're going to do an example that's a little bit like yesterday with a slight twist. So today we've got the instructions are to simplify. And remember in this indicator that matters because if it just says write it in radical form or write it in exponential form, you don't have to actually simplify it at all. You just have to rewrite it in a different form. But in this case we're going to simplify all right, so we've got 64 raised to the negative one-half. Now that should look a lot like what we did yesterday as far as we simplified um, terms in exponential form and in the steps were put it in radical form, factor the base, um, circle in your group, and then apply the exponent. Okay, so we're still going to do those four steps. However, because we have a negative exponent, we have to deal with that first. So this whole thing is over 1, so we flip the whole thing, and now you're going to do the exact same thing, 64 to the 1 half. You're going to do the exact same thing now, but everything is going to be carried out in the bottom of your fraction in this particular problem. So just don't lose that in the process and end up eventually forgetting that you're now in the bottom of a fraction. So we still change this to radical form, base, base, stays your base and your root is a 2 and your exponent is a 1 and again keeping in mind this is all happening underneath your 64 hopefully you can do this in your head square root of 64 is 8 okay because you're looking at a root 2 your there we go because your root is 2 you need two of a kind to pull out you have two eights they pull out as one but when they pull out they pull out in the bottom of the fraction because that's where all your work was after you flipped. So your answer here is 1 over 8. Okay? Let's see. I'm going to kind of do these in a particular order here. All right. <clears throat> Now we're going to move on to multiplying. So we've got 125 raised to the one third times 125 raised to the one third. Now we have like bases. So when you have like bases, you simply add the exponents. So if you have a like base of 125, it stays your base. And then you're going to add one third plus one third. Okay. So that is going to equal 125 to the two thirds. And now we're where we were yesterday. Now we have to convert this to a radical. So we write our base. Our exponent is two and our root is three. So we factor 125 and we get 5 and 25, 5 and 5. And again, you always look to your root for your grouping instructions. My root is 3, so I'm going to group three fives together. They come out as 1. The last step is to apply your exponent, and so 5 squared is 25. So when you go back to the very beginning of your problem, 125 to the one-third times 125 to the one-third equals 25. So it's very easy to simplify these. You don't even need a calculator if you just follow the steps, okay? All right, let's look at a division problem. So if we have 81 and 5 halves over... 81 and 4 halves. Well, that's supposed to be a 2. Doesn't really look like a 2, but there we go. All right, so my bases are the same, so that means I'm going to keep my base, and because it's a division problem, I'm going to subtract 5 halves minus 4 halves. Okay, 
and I get 81 over 1 half. Now I put this in radical form. Whoops, I forgot my 1. There we go. 81, my root is 2, my exponent is 1, square root of 81 is 9. Okay. Now, if you want to skip on your homework, if you want to skip this step right here of actually taking the time to write out 5 halves minus 4 halves, if in your head you can do that and you know it's 1 half, you can skip that step. Just be mindful. Same thing here, right? This step right here, you can skip that step. If you can just go straight to your base, your base is 125, add 1 third and 1 third is 2 third, you can kind of skip over that step of writing your exponent out, okay? Um, I just do it kind of expanded a couple of times just to make sure you see where I'm going with it, where I'm getting the numbers, and then um, you can shortcut where you need to or where you can. Just don't shortcut too much to where you end up getting the wrong answer. All right, uh, let's see. All right, so now I want to do, I want to do a couple here uh, that's going to deal with getting in the negatives. All right, so if we have 3 to the 1 fourth times 3 to the 1 fourth all taken to the power of 8. And you'll have ones like this on your homework. I promise it's not hard at all, okay? You always work inside parentheses first, right? That's the rule of math. So before we do anything with that power of eight, we're just simply going to combine our bases here. Our base is three. And when we have a like base, we add one fourth plus one fourth, which is two fourths. And I'm gonna go ahead and reduce. What's two fourths reduce? One half. I'm gonna go ahead and do that in one step. If you need to do it in two, you're fine. Now you still have that power out there to deal with. And we know when we have a power to a power, right? Power to a power, you multiply. And that's really eight over one. So when you multiply the uh, numerators, one times eight, your base still stays a base of three. When you multiply one times eight on the numerators, you get eight. And when you multiply the denominators, two times one, you get two. And we always simplify our fractions if we can. So 8 over 2 reduces to 4. And so now you just take 3 to the 4th power, which is 81, right? Check me. So you still just have to use the operations of math, PEMDAS, that you know. You work within the parentheses first, simplifying anything in the parentheses that you can. Then you apply any exponents. Okay, that's the E in PEMDAS. Um, and then you change it to a radical if you need to, and you work it like you did yesterday. Uh, let's see. Let's get another piece of paper here. All right, this will be example number five. Okay, if we have 16 and 3 fourths over 16 and Let's do five fourths. Okay. So your base and your base are both 16. So your base is going to stay 16. And I think division ones are really easy to do because you can just take that five fourths and you can just write it up there. You can put minus five fourths. Whoops. It helps if my pen actually touches the screen. You can put minus five fourths right here. And it's really easy to see. You're going to get negative. 2 over 4, okay, because 3 fourths minus 5 fourths, your bigger number was on the bottom, okay. The other way you can think about it, and it's kind of harder with this, with the fractions, but remember when we did this last indicator, we did this, I said, where do you have more? You have more on the bottom, so your answer is going to end up on the bottom. Well, your answer is going to end up on the bottom because this negative is going to cause us to flip it, but before I flip it, I'm going to go ahead and reduce it, 
So negative 2 over negative 4 reduces to negative 1 half. Now I am going to flip this all to the bottom. And if you remember what I told you yesterday about 16th to the 1 half is the same as a plain old square root. Makes it easy to work, but just in case you didn't, we'll go ahead and work it. 1 over, we're going to change this to radical form. 16 is our base, our root is 2, our exponent is 1. The square root of 16 is 4. So the properties of a negative or a, a smaller number minus a bigger number, it's going to end up with a negative exponent. You're going to have to flip that to the bottom. And then I want to cover one other instance where you're going to see a negative in a spot that, uh, let's see, 9 raised to the 3 halves over 9 to the negative 1 half. Couple ways you can think about this. Both of them are perfectly legit, okay? Because they both do the same thing. You can either flip that nine to the negative one half up top and it becomes a multiplication problem. So if you do it, and I'll work it both ways and I don't care whichever way in your mind it makes most sense, okay? You can either, before you do anything, you can flip that nine to the one half up top and it changes division to multiplication. So instead of being a division problem, you would have nine to the one half. Now that's gone. And now you just simply add your exponents. So you would have three over two. Okay, and I'll, we'll work it out the rest of the way. Or the other way you can do it is if you have, let me move that up a little bit, let me rewrite it. If you have 9 to the 3 halves over 9 to the negative 1 half, if you subtract your exponents like you're supposed to in a division problem, minus a minus 1 half goes plus. Either way, you do the exact same thing. You still are going to add your base of 9, or have your base of 9, and you're going to add 3 plus 1, did I, oh, what did I do? Y'all didn't even catch it. You gotta holler when I do that. I'm adding those, so I should be a four. Speak up if you catch me in an error. I always give you candy. Three plus one is four, not three. I was multiplying. We don't multiply these. We add these, okay? And here it would also be four over two. So you can see you get the same answer. So whichever way makes, makes more sense to you, however way you write it that it makes more sense to you, doesn't matter. Reduce the fraction before you do anything and you simply get 81. Reduce the fraction, you get 81, okay? Uh, the only other thing you might see, I'm just trying to make sure I've got everything that you're gonna see on your homework. Um, if you have 2 to the second power to a negative 5 over 2. Okay, if you have this, you're going to want to do your power to a power. Okay, there's nothing really inside the parentheses. You can do it two different ways and you'll get the same answer. But power to a power, so you have your base of 2. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10 over 2. That reduces to negative 5. You flip it to the bottom because of the negative exponent. And then 2 to the fifth power is 1 over 32. I think that pretty much covers, let me just glance at your homework real quick. I think that covers everything you're going to see. I do believe it does. Okay, um, for those of you at home, um, click load. Make sure you take all these notes in your three ring binder. We will do a note check this week. And then um, click load, show all your work, and email me if you have any questions.